Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the First Direct Arena in Leeds Live on Sky Sports. Please welcome now from Colombia, Jose Miguel Torres. Well, boxing is certainly in this man's blood. Brother Ricardo once held the WBO light welterweight title. We saw this fellow a couple of years ago, Jim in Quebec when he was overwhelmed by the big punching middleweight David Lemieux. Now he was stopped, but he was stopped on his feet and he'd been down seven times. And losing to Lemieux, obviously no disgrace, he's one of the biggest punches in the world, but this man showed up all that night, tremendous heart to keep getting back up. Is heart gonna be enough to get you through a super middleweight fight though? No, I think it's another tough one for him against a guy who's naturally bigger and stronger and uh, better. So I think it's going to be a tough night, as you say, he is tough himself, he'll give it his best shot, I think it'll be entertaining as long as it lasts. So this is one to look forward to. Ah, uh, now, ladies and gentlemen, coming to the ring from St. Helens, England, Martin Murray! See, it all went wrong when Craig Stephen R. Ring, uh, ring announcer said St. Helens because this is a rugby league fan from St. Helens and St. Helens last night beat Leeds up the road in rugby league. So this may not be the warmest welcome Martin Murray's ever received, but he won't care about that. Because this is the guy that fights over all over the world, put an opponent in front of him, they'll take him on. Went to Germany, boxed Felix Sturm to a draw, went to Argentina, put Sergio Martinez on the floor, didn't get the decision he deserved. And he went to Monaco and put up that incredibly heroic performance earlier in the year against the fearsome Gennady Golovkin. Now up at super middleweight, now hopefully zeroing in on another shot at a world title. And maybe that St. Helens announcement has spooked him because he doesn't want to come into this arena. Maybe he's waiting for the music to finish. Well, we're happy to see him up in the super middleweight division. I mean, the uh, world level, it's a terrific division. And even at domestic level, the Gale Groves, you know, the Callum Smith, there's some fantastic fights up there at super middle. And the Martin is big and big enough and tough enough to mix it at super middle. It may even be a better fight for the super middle, I don't know. But it's good to see him up in this division, and I look forward to see how his career pans out. Well, he's always been a big super middleweight. That's one thing you say about Martin. And now that he's up at super middle, he's just so much happier. I'm talking to him yesterday after the weigh-in when he weighed, weighed in at 11, 13. I said, do you put on another 10, 12 pounds like you did as a middleweight? He said, no. He said, I go up to exactly what I did at middleweight. He said, I just feel so natural and comfortable here. He's got his nutrition, he's gone forward, they've got their new training regime, and he just looks and feels like a super middleweight. As we look at the tail of the tape, Torres has been around. They both scale 11 13, but remember, Torres has spent most of his career not at super middle, not at middle, but at light middle. And that's where he's got his big knockout percentage. You look at the tail of the tape, you look at Miguel Torres with all those knockouts. 27 KOs and 31 victories, but all of those were achieved at light middleweight, not against the physical super middleweight like Martin Murray. But it's another step on the road to what he hopes is a fourth world title fight and a first at this weight division for Martin Murray. He can't afford a stumble now. Ladies and gentlemen, Eddie Hearn and Matchroom Boxing are proud to bring you 12 rounds of boxing for the vacant WBA Intercontinental Super Middleweight Crown. Our supervisor for the World Boxing Association, Mr. Robert Smith. Our steward in charge from the British Boxing Board of Control, Mr. Alistair Hayes. Our three scoring judges from France, Monsieur Bertrand Janu. From Denmark, Mr. Jan Christensen. From England, Mr. Dave Ferris. Timekeeper, Mr. Andrew East, and the referee in charge from England, Mr. Howard Foster. And now, ladies and gentlemen, time to meet the boxers. Firstly, in the red corner, winning black with gold, weighing in 11 stone 13 pounds, 
from 37 contests, he has 31 wins, 27 inside the distance, only six defeats. The former Colombian WBC Latino light middleweight champion, the undefeated WBO and NABF middleweight champion. From Magangue, Colombia, Mojolito, Jose Miguel Torres. And in the blue corner, wearing white shorts, red and black trim, also weighing in at 11 stone 13 pounds, a 34 fight record, 31 wins, 14 inside the distance, only two defeats, one draw. The former prize fighter champion, the former British Commonwealth, WBA Intercontinental and WBC Silver Middleweight Champion and World Title Challenger from St. Helens, Merseyside, Martin Murray! Both in the dressing room, we both know what I expect. Keep it clean, break straight away when told. Both you watch your heads in close. Good luck to you both. Touch gloves. Good luck, lads. You look at them both, and it's amazing. They're both scale 11 13 yesterday afternoon on the scales. Murray just looks much more solid than his opponent. Can he impose himself on this very experienced Colombian? 36 Second years down. old. Round one. This is 38th fight. And Martin Murray. The worst thing he can do is look past this opponent and start planning for another shot at a world title. The talk is of Arthur Abraham, the WBO champion. And Martin does have a top 15 ranking with that sanctioning body. But first things first, he's got to get rid of Torres. And as we saw against David Lemieux, certainly punches harder than Murray and just about 99% of every other professional boxer out there. It took David Lemieux an awful lot to get rid of this fella. Seven times he had him down, seven times he got back up, and eventually the referee said, enough's enough. He is brave and tough. Yeah, Murray's a, a boxer that keeps things fairly simple. There's not a lot can go wrong with the way he does things. You know, he never hangs his chin out. You know, he tucks up the chin down, the hands up, you know, the, the knees bent. He just shuffles forward with good technique, puts combinations together nicely. You know, it's a style that uh, nothing much goes wrong with. I uh, just uh, pushing him down there. Oh, a sign of how physical Martin Murray is and possibly how frail the Colombian is up at this higher weight. I think uh, Torres may just have gone down there to, to save him being hit. I think that was a smart move when he was leaned on. I mean, if he, punch still could have come. He probably just uh, dropped his knees, showed a bit of smarts. But he's going to be tricky for a couple of rounds, I would imagine. I mean, he's, he's come a long way to pick up a payday. I don't know how much ambition he's brought with him, Torres. But he's tricky and he's experienced. Murray's looked to land a few straight shots to the midsection already in this fight as the Leeds United chance ring out here in the arena. That's only going to get louder. Big right hand coming in from Murray. Oh, Murray a body shot that 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 he doesn't look happy. He doesn't look happy as he. Well, that right hand really scrambled him. No, I don't think it was a finish, and I'm wondering there. Uh, no, I mean, that's not a punch that should finish a fight. I'm glad that hasn't done. But the way he pulled faces, that's not like a good old pro like Torres. No. Not, not a good sign, I'm afraid. And it shows that he is feeling this power at super middle. And Murray does bang. And Murray knows he can hurt him. Good uppercut there from Torres, but it just bounces off Murray's jaw. Doesn't bother him at all. Long right hand getting through from the St. Helens man as well. This is good from Murray. I thought it may have taken a couple of rounds uh, to, to find the range with this fella because he's tricky. But that he's had him on the floor. He's landed a couple of solid jabs, solid right hands. 
So good opening round yeah, for Murray. Exactly the start Martin Murray would have wanted for himself. He's had Jose Miguel Torres on the floor and feeling sorry for himself. Let's have another look at it. No, it was a good shot. It was a good shot. Uh, and then the, 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 the face he looked up, he pulled faces. I was beginning to wonder there, was he going to stay on his knees? Not looking to the corner, not the least bit happy. But thankfully, if he hadn't got up then, I'd be calling him a tourist, I'm afraid, just come over for the payday. I mean, it was a good punch, no, no denying that. But uh, as you've said earlier, Nick, we've seen him taking far bigger punches and getting back on in there. So we'll see how much uh, of a dent that has put in him uh, Corners, ten seconds. as the second round comes up. Well, I'm sure Martin Murray knows his record as well and knows Second that out, round two. One knockdown's never going to be enough against this fella. There's round a big bit of two, then. And he's grease on his face. Huge, huge of grease. Of I mean, that's a, that's grease a golf ball of grease, that is. That's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, that, that is... Uh, that's set a new world record right there. Just tell him to wipe it off the glove. <laughs> I think it's the language barrier here. Or was that just another trick to buy a few more seconds? Whatever, here we go. Round 12 then. Of this 12 rounder. And as you heard Carl Frock say earlier, so much talent in this division domestically. It really is talent loaded. And then Martin Murray's come along and just added his considerable ability to the mix. James DeGale, a belt holder. George Groves, fingers crossed for him next month. Later this month, excuse me, we're into September now. Against Badu Jack. Callum Smith and Rocky Fielding meeting soon in a fight we're all looking forward to. And then there's Martin here as well. Frank Buglioni very much in the mix. A high world ranking for Frank. Awful lot of talent. Well, this is a bit more like the Torres we wanted to see. I just walked onto a short oh. right hand. He, he, he's arguing with him. Well, there's a short right hand. I think he lost his balance as the punch landed. But uh, I think Howard Foster uh, right to call it a knockdown. Well, it took David Lemieux seven. Now he's at him twice. Although he looked disgusted with that one. Trying to land a little shot inside there. Lemieux and uh, yeah, Howard Foster really giving Murray a talking to there for use of the head. Yeah, well, that suggests he didn't think it was accidental, Nick, uh, which is not particularly like Martin Murray. Not at all. I well, said Martin's one of the classiest boxers that you can meet inside or outside the ropes. This Torres is good given, stuff. Having a go here. <laughs> good stuff. A real go. Well, this is the one we expected. He's got him again. Landed another shot. Well, this is, well, he's looking disgusted again, but do, do, do you know what? that a punch landed. But, see, the thing, Nick, is it's not the punches that have caused the knockdown. He's taken a punch and gone down. I think it's a balance thing. It, you know, but both of those knockdowns, I mean, he's disgusted because he didn't really feel either of the punches were really that solid. But Howard Foster is right to call them knockdowns. You know, it seems he's, he's gone on the floor, you know, without taking a punch already. And I think he feels both the knockdowns were similar. See, there he, oh, he could have gone down again then. Yeah, very animated in the Torres corner. Murray continuing to just probe away with those jabs to the body as well. And then missing wildly with the left hook as Torres looks to turn into a limpet. More body work again here from Murray. Continuing to bang in left hands downstairs. Well, it's three knockdowns now. Two there. Seven. Seven. Uh, both of them, as you say, Jim, a little bit strange, because he wasn't in any distress, <laughs> distress at all. He might be getting distressed. And they finished talking to him, though. Let's have another look at them. You know, I mean, it's a punch landed, but I think he was stumbling forward as the punch did land, but uh, Howard Foster's right to call it a knockdown, but that's, I think, is why he's disgusted. See, see again, you know, and then 
Yeah, you got to call that a knockdown. You know, he, he thinks because the punch didn't really hurt him that much, but the punch landed. Then the forearm, uh, that's the, the head, uh, uh, that must have been. But I think if anyone was to blame with that flash of heads, it was Torres. Corners, 10 seconds. Then he, you know, he tumbles to the floor again, as he has done without a punch in the past. So he's, uh, points down. wise, he's certainly Round throwing three. this out of reach. Round three then of this 12 rounder. There is a belt on the line. WBA Intercontinental title. Which would give Martin a third world ranking should he take this belt. He's not, I say, number 15 with the WBA, number 10 with the WBC. Uh, we'll give him more options. If we can add this one to that collection. Uh, Torres bringing a bit more purpose and urgency to his work here in this third round. Just all over the place. Both landed good body shots there. I, mean, I don't know what it is about the balance of Torres. Is it just the size of Murray that's knocking him off balance, or is it uh, some hard fights in the past? I, I, I don't quite know, but his balance is non existent at times. Well, he's a very tough guy as well. You know, we keep talking about the David Lemieux fight because it was so spectacular. That's the only time he's been stopped. That's a knockdown down again. Two, no, three, that was a knockdown. Four. Four. Eight. And we're only in the third round. I think uh, Torres is annoyed because it was only one of the knockdowns that he was hurt. But uh, he's taken punches, he's going on the floor. So he's a mile behind in points after only two rounds. Well, I think that's why he loaded up with that big swinging Howitz over a right hand that missed by a mile. There's only one way he wins this fight. And that's putting Martin Murray on the floor. And Jose Miguel Torres is no Gennady Golovkin. It's just extraordinary. It's non existent. And there he goes again. Now this one is not ruled a knockdown, but he's looking for the canvas at every opportunity. And what is it, four knockdowns now? And certainly at least twice he's been bundled to the floor rather too easily. Good uppercut from Torres. Lands another one as well. Needs a response from Murray, and it's, and it's delivered. Bizarre round there. And Murray just bouncing this fella around the ring like a rag doll. Well, again, some, some more strange knockdowns. And look, look at disgust from Torres. But, well, he's probably going to argue that he's slipped that right hand. Yeah, well, that, uh, <laughs> I would never have called that a knockdown. There we go. The referee did. It's getting worse and worse. Oh, he's ending up solid. Who isn't giving out the body language of a man who's enjoying being in leads, is he? No, he's just putting up like a bit of stubborn resistance now and again, but uh, not looking when he's travelled a long way here, but not looking as though he fancies he's any chance of winning this, just kind of going through the motions at times and too easily going on the floor. He's had a bit of success with uppercuts, and then there he goes again. What? I mean, it's just Two. extraordinary every time Murray connects. See, the first time he did it, I think he did that so Murray couldn't throw a punch. You know, he just 
took the knee down for safety, which I thought was quite tricky, quite quick thinking. Oh, good shot there from Murray. But you know, <laughs> I'm getting pretty fed up with them doing it now. Yeah, so is the timekeeper. Not much to fault about Murray's performance so far, but he has been caught with a few uppercuts straight up the middle. Just bulldozing him around. Good combination to the body there from from Murray, and another body shot that just sort of ripped up through and across it went again. And this is this is becoming farcical. It really is. Six, seven, eight. See all these knockdowns now, but no real reason to be getting them out of there because he's not taking a pound and he's going down pretty much for nothing most of the time. little inside uppercut there from Torres and how long before he hits the deck again a bit scrappy but again as soon as they get to a clinch I mean this fellow's looking for the canvas at every opportunity. And now Foster's had enough. Well, he's having a chat with the two of them, but I mean, uh, Martin Murray's doing nothing yeah. wrong. It's not his fault. Uh, Torres is making it awkward, making it messy, and stumbling to the floor at every opportunity. Yeah, he was on his there. way again there, and yeah, Murray knocked him back up again, I think. <laughs> and now he's ready to go oh. again. The glove is touched, so two, that's another one. Three. Well, with the number of trips he's made, that haven't been counts. I've lost count now of how many we... Uh, well, I'm actually well, holding two, two fingers up at the moment just so that I can keep count in this one round. No, we know why you're holding two fingers up. <laughs> I think it's five, yes. And there's another body shot that comes in that, once again, he just dipped at the knees. Well, that was a good solid right hand. If he'd gone down from that one, I wouldn't have complained. There he goes again. Uh, it's not a knockdown. You, know, you can actually end up getting disqualified uh, for, for, for this. I mean, every opportunity is on the floor. Oh. An easy night's work so far. Oliver Harrison is as smart a tactician as a trainer as you'll find in this business and he's done wonders with martin murray and our statisticians have been on the case jim they're saying it's six knockdowns yeah well i've got uh, i think this is heading to the guinness book of records if it goes the distance i think i've got 10 points between them at the moment after four rounds cool corners 10 seconds Well, we pretty much reckoned the Second job would be a bit too big five. for Torres, and that's how it's turning out. Be nice if Murray could get him out of there. Well, I think one more knockdown, and he might, Jim. As Paul Smith, who studies these things very closely, has been telling us that under WBA rules, seven knockdowns, and that's it. So let's see if that applies here, if Howard Foster knows that rule indeed. Well, I've got to be honest, I didn't know it myself. I thought three in the one round, uh, obviously, but I didn't know that seven. Yep. Well, yeah. uh, no, well, good shot there, and he takes it. He takes it and comes back. That's the strange that thing. He's, but he's taken some very solid-looking punches and not wobbled, and yet the most innocuous-looking shots send him to his knees. And again, just playing devil's advocate here, Jim. I mentioned it the last... The last round, Martin has been caught with some shots. Now, whether that's because he just doesn't respect this fella's power at all. And down we go again, but no. I mean, we have to remember, I mean, Torres was a decent fighter at one time. Like, you know, so, I mean, he's entitled to fight, have some success. And if, if he wasn't doing anything, then we'd be calling that a, we know it's a bit of a mis mismatch, but we'd be calling it a complete waste of time. 
So we do have to expect him to get through now and again. He was a decent fighter, but uh, this job is just too big for him. Getting through it again with the, the uppercuts. Nothing he can do bothers Murray. Decent body combination again from Murray. Six and a big left hand, and again, they're really solid looking body shots. And he definitely fell. But this time he stayed up, and then as soon as as soon as Murray if he dips down and as soon as Murray touches his shoulders, over he goes. Interesting to hit it from uh, Carl and Paul at the end of this one. Both, of course, have shared a ring with Arthur Abraham, and down he goes again. Two, three, and that is the seven. Five, six, seven, eight. And that's it. Now, Foster knew his rules, Paul Smith knew his rules. I don't think Jose Miguel Torres knew the rule. Well, I can't say I'm, I'm too upset about that because uh, we didn't want that to be dragging on much longer. It wasn't competitive. At no time was it competitive. Murray was too big and too good for him. So the fact that it's come to an end uh, prematurely, I'm pleased and I think the crowd are pleased as well. Well, you know, as we take another look at the finish team, let, let me ask you, is, is Martin ready for a world title fight against the likes of Arthur Abraham, in your opinion? Of course, I mean, he's world class, he, you know, he's contested a world uh, title three times, so there's no reason to say, is he ready? Of course he's ready. And I think he's a good opponent for Abraham, because the one thing you have to be strong enough to stand with Arthur Abraham, and uh, Murray is certainly strong enough to do that, I think that would be a terrific opportunity for him and a terrific match. I think we'd really enjoy seeing that one. We can't judge him on this performance today, this guy was just a test from start to finish. A good fighter at one time, who just looked as though he was picking up a payday. The first knockdown, he actually looked as though he was contemplating getting himself out of there. He hung around a while longer, but never at any time could he make any impression. So, well, he got the job done, but against a better opponent, he would look an awful lot better, I'm sure. Well, he's had a good weekend, hasn't he? St. Helens beating Leeds in the Super League last night and Murray bouncing this fella all over the place to get a stoppage win here and move one step closer to that shot at a world title that he craves so desperately Martin Murray safely through well ladies and gentlemen the end comes two minutes 19 seconds into round number five referee Howard Foster stops the contest in his opinion, Jose Torres in no position to continue. The winner, the new WBA Intercontinental Super Middleweight Champion, Martin Murray! All smiles there as Martin Murray picks up another belt to add to the collection. Job done. Well, that was a strange one, and not one we're in any hurry to see again. No fault, no blame attaches to Martin Murray for that one little bit. But he's growing into the division. And next stop, you hope, a shot at the world title. We'll see. Let's see what uh, Martin made of that really bizarre night. Very, very strange night. Let's hear from him. Martin, a word on your performance in a second, but have you ever been involved in your pro career of, as a, in a fight as bizarre as that with seven official knockdowns? How many was there? Seven. Seven, yeah. I've watched tapes of him, I know when you hit him properly, he kind of like goes, but he always recovers. But um, yeah, I've never been in a fight where he's up and down like a yo-yo like that. Your third straight stoppage win as a super middleweight. Do you feel established now and ready for tougher tests? Yeah, I feel established, yeah, I think what I did and what I learned as a middleweight was, you know, invaluable. And me at my natural weight now, you know, everything's so good. Got to thank this man, Oliver. The dedication he shows me and the lads in the gym, you know, is unbelievable. I can't, th I can't thank him enough. And also, I'm sent the kid some art bit come. I've had a great camp being so active with Max Room. I've had one week off in, in four months, so, you know, I went into this fight feeling really good. He, he was hard to actually pin down. 
you know, we've been... I was, I was hoping I was going to get him out sooner than that, to be honest with you, the way things are going, but it was quite hard to pin down, but we knew if we stuck to the game plan, like we practised, he'd eventually go when he did. Eddie Hearn's been teasing us all on social networking with the name of Arthur Abraham. Let's have a word with Eddie. Eddie, who's next for Martin, and can you deliver a world title? For sure, you know, he's had three fights now in eight weeks, I think, you know, and Torres was disappointing tonight. I expected a bit more from him. I've seen him fight before. He's a big super middleweight, you know. Both guys were coming up for middleweight, and you saw the difference in size. You know, Martin's a big super middleweight, even though he's coming up. And, you know, he wants the fight with Arthur Abraham. But I'd like to keep him in the UK, to be honest with you, and box here. You've got James the Gale, the world champion. You've got George Groves could win a world title. You've got Callum Smith against Rocky Fielding, although one's his pal. You know, it's a great time for the super middleweight division in Britain and the world. And, you know, he's ready for a world title shot. He's ready for a big fight. He's had three fights in eight weeks, and he's going away for a couple of weeks and then diving straight back into a big fight. Well done.